Good morning. I know that I love talking. You know that I love talking about marketing. You know that I love talking about content. And I have recently met a new friend, Claudia Schalks. She's in the Netherlands, and we are on completely different schedules. But we love to talk about marketing. And so we thought, why not bring our conversations just online so that people who are struggling with some of the same marketing things that we see our clients struggling with could benefit from our conversation. So Claudia is. Um, a marketing expert and she's one of her I think her superpower is that she can see a problem before it's even fully outlined for the person having the problem she's like she's just got like almost like this x-ray vision I think so why not have these conversations transparently so that we can learn more about marketing so Claudia thank you so much for being thank here you. thank you for inviting me when you mentioned the topic I was thrilled I was really <laughs> thrilled so let's talk about the topic so um, when you and I meet entrepreneurs, I work with mostly solopreneurs. Um, they are they're usually struggling with something in their business, like something's not working for them. Uh -huh. And they usually have a very long explanation for what they think is the problem. Uh -huh. And so today I wanted to talk about what are some of the issues that you see them struggling with that are actually, they don't know that it's the problem, but you know that it's the problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, the, the biggest issue I see is that their marketing foundations aren't solid. Mm -hmm. So they either fly or ignore uh, taking time to really get to know their uh, ideal client or their buying persona or avatar, how you want to, to uh, call it. And that is definitely one of the pillars on which your marketing rests. Because if you don't know your client, and I would dare to say better than they know themselves, how can you create content that addresses their needs, that counts their fears, that uh, feeds their dreams, for one? I'm going to take notes while you talk so that we can get all of your ideas out. But this idea of knowing your audience better than you know yourself, I say the same thing, but why are people so resistant to doing that? Oh, because it's boring work. It's definitely <laughs> boring work. And the thing is, it's boring work. It's definitely boring work. And um, the thing is, we we have, there are all these resources that tell you where to find information, like data mining or internet forums mm. or uh, market research or go to Amazon reviews and you get the information. But when you have the information, they don't tell you what to do with that information. So all of a sudden you're drowned in this information and you don't know what to do. So the research, the, <clears throat> the interviewing, the qualifying information can be very boring. And if you are not clear what you want to do with your business or why a buying persona is so important, you definitely don't put the time and effort. Yeah, I when my clients actually do this work, because I really kind of have to convince them that it's important. Like I, I actually can't go any further with them until they do this. So the, my private clients are kind of stuck with me, right? Like they're just going to do it. But my group clients, they could skip it if they wanted to. Uh -huh. But once they do it, I, I always say it's like the unsexy part of your business, finding out what they're thinking. Well, <clears throat> have you seen that that image of the uh, of the iceberg where you only see the tip of the iceberg yeah. above sea level and the huge iceberg? This is, marketing foundations is exactly the same thing. It's underneath. Nobody sees it. Nobody. Uh, no, well, nobody. It's a. It's a lot. But it's it's the hard work, and it's even harder when you're starting your business, mm. or when you are. Uh, pivoting your business to something else and you're trying to attract clients that you haven't worked with before. Because if you have clients, <clears throat> you have to gather the courage to go and interview them. Mm -hmm. And I would recommend that you interview them face to face instead of sending them a survey. Because when they give you answers, you can dive in and ask more, more uh, details. But if, <clears throat> if you are starting and you don't have clients, then you're a bit like walking in the dark and you it's start true. with one it's an ideal client but you don't know so <clears throat> it all adds to the uncertainty of your business and when you're starting there are so many other things you don't know and you really just want to start you know many of mm -hmm. us me included uh, we became entrepreneurs because we wanted to do more of that thing we love <clears throat> mm -hmm. excuse me so in my cases for instance 
helping entrepreneurs to grow their business with marketing that works for them instead of the other way around, not them working mm -hmm. for the marketing. Mm -hmm. um, for you, it's making content easier so that it can do the heavy lifting for your business and for other people, or your, well, everybody has a, a thing. <clears throat> and then on top of it, you throw marketing. And frankly, few of us have had marketing in a way that we can apply it without having studied or having a coach or, you know, it's mm -hmm. one of those those things like school, you're thrown into life and you don't know anything about taxes, you don't know anything about buying a house. Writing a check. Have, yeah, and you still have to do it, right? And marketing is exactly the same thing. So um, then you grow frustrated and you let it go. So one of the things I do to prevent the boredom is that I first uh, help them to understand what is their unique process they bring to the market. Because when they do that, they see that they have a process, a unique process, then uh, <clears throat> the buying persona becomes clearer. And now that they have a process, uh, working on the buying persona makes it easier. So that's one of the things um, I do. But definitely it's one, it's a step you shouldn't fly over like if it was nothing. Can we just break that down for a second? What do you want me to break down? So how does your unique process actually help you with this problem we're talking about, about not understanding your audience? Okay. <clears throat> the thing of the unique process is that it has several elements, but the most important element that it has is the departing point and the end point. The departing mm -hmm. point is what is the question or what do your clients come to you for? in the mm -hmm. words of your clients. Mm, that's the big one. Because for instance, <clears throat> I, among the services I give, I do also do branding. Branding can serve for many things, you know, can serve to grow your business, to attract clients. But branding also has the role of helping you decide what are the projects you're going to jump in? What are the partnerships you are going to join? What is your mission? Mm -hmm. So if I only <clears throat> bear the, if, if, if somebody says, or when they come to me, they say, I want more clients. That's what they say. They mm -hmm. don't say I want branding or I need a logo or, <clears throat> or they say, uh, when I explain what I do, people roll their eyes, you know, and my tongue gets tied and uh, whatever. So when you start with the question your clients ask you, you already start to unravel who your buying persona is. Hmm. Because then you're focusing your solution or your skills and expertise in function of the problem they have. And not in function of a specific solution you have, but the process you have to take them from A to B. <clears throat> Excuse me, I had a cold recently and I'm still no having a sore throat. For instance, you and I talked the other day about this client of mine who uh, has a catering and event service, right? Yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> with COVID, she her, she practically lost her business because here, at least in the Netherlands, we couldn't do any type of gatherings. So she called me in tears and I asked her, why is that your clients hire you to do events? And then she said, to grow their business, to launch a product. <clears throat> That's a completely different approach to see her business because the moment she do she stops seeing their business as a strict process or a, as a label, as catering and events, and she starts to see her business from the point of view of their clients, she can create endless services to serve them. And for instance, she is a great networker. She can help her clients to network she can introduce them to people. She can teach them how to network. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the biggest thing, and, and this process addresses many other things as the what do you do question and what problems you yeah. solve, et cetera, et cetera. But the biggest thing is it forces you to see your client from the problem they are dealing with and not to see your client from what skills do you bring to the market to solve the problem. It's a complete turn to your marketing. Because yeah. it opens to the services that you can create. If you see the problem, instead of stepping into the market because you have an idea or you have a skill, but you step into the marketing 
<coughs> score, excuse me, into the market because you see a problem that you can solve. It's a complete turn. Turn in what you're going to do, turn in how you're going to sell it, and turn into the clients you're going to attract to make a living. So, so how do you how talk do you, how do you how do you do this process without talking about it all the time? time? Uh, <clears throat> that's a good question. Um, first, it's not a process as such. It's more the, the, the way you do things. Well, yes, it's a process. It's how you take your clients from A to B. So you, I call it proprietary system. Some other people call it signature system. So the people call it framework. But the, the thing about this is it's so unique to you. It's your thing. It's the way you do it. It's, it's how you take people from A to B. So <clears throat> what I do is I talk about how you do things. And in, in this exercise with my clients, I take them through several steps where they realize what they do as a solution. And then they see they don't do events or catering, but they do more of the stuff. So for instance, for a long time, I was convinced that I taught marketing foundations. Mm -hmm. But every year I interview my clients and the constant answer was chaos in the uh, order in the chaos and structure. Mm. So, you know, that also says the kind of people that I can help people who uh, need a bit of structure and has have this chaos and because of this chaos, they, they can work. So that's where you see, okay, if I can help people, if what people see I do is give them order and give them structure, that means that I have to add that to my communication, that I have to add that to my content, that I have to add that eventually to my message, you know? Yep. So what I wanted to really bring to the light is that when people don't really know who their audience is and they don't know their audience deeply, and then they're not speaking to the problem, they're more speaking about, this is what I do, these are my skills, this is my signature system. They're not really talking about the problem. What always winds up happening is they, they say, I don't have enough business, I'm not getting people, people are not interested. And it's not that, it's just that you're not focused, you're focused on the wrong lane of your business. Yeah. So you wind up wasting a lot of time. And what I find is people wind up trying, they're searching all over the place for a fix when the fix is in what I see a lot. And I think you see this too, is go back and find out what your audience is struggling with and how, and the words they use to describe it. Exactly. And to give you a, a, an even more narrow down, down idea of this, let's suppose um, you have a dietitian, right? A nutritionist. You would think that everybody who wants to lose weight uh, could be her client. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the thing is, the driver to lose weight is not the same for everybody. So you have to be very careful how you're going to word your message. So <clears throat> you have, for instance, the, the new mom that has this baby fat, right? If you ask her, what is your problem? She will say, every time I look at myself in the mirror, I look, I can't recognize my body. When I wear my clothes from before pregnancy, I look like a potato bag, uh, you know, like a body with a potato bag. My marital life is suffering because mm -hmm. uh, I don't have self-confidence. You know, has she said in these three things, I am fat? Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. She's talking about self-confidence. She's talking about not recognizing herself. So if in your message you talk about you're going to lose weight, you're only going to eat carrots and celery. This is exaggerating, of <laughs> course, right? And five times a week you're going to be in the gym. Your message, even if your method is the best one, isn't going to click with her because you're talking about something that doesn't resonate with her situation. And the same thing with a plainly overweight mom, you know? She might say, um, when we go to attraction parks, I can't, I don't fit in those seats. So I am the one mm -hmm. making pictures and I am a part of my memories, of my family memories. I want to have the energy mm -hmm. to run behind my kid. So then again, if you come and say, yes, you are going to be five times a week in a gym and live on water selling carrots, that's not going to match. So you really need to understand why, what is the driver for your client to, um, to look for help because if it's not urgent enough, and this is the other problem, I see that I'll tell you. if it's not urgent enough, 
people will not take action. So one of the things you have to figure out is how urgent is this for your client? Is it urgent today or is it urgent for in a week? Because if it's over a week, it's not urgent and they aren't going yeah. to take action. I want, so I had, a, I don't know if I ever told you the story. I had a woman call me. She had just gotten out of college. She had also, while she was going in college, she had also gotten a life training certification and she was about to start her business. And she contacted me. We did a discovery call and she actually was not a good candidate for coaching because she, it wasn't an urgent problem for her. She hadn't yet started her business. She wasn't actually in pain yet. She was almost doing a preventative strike against what she knew or thought was coming. But when I told her the price of private coaching, she was like, oh no, that's like, that's not for me. But she had not been kind of ping ponged around enough in the business world to know that like, this is a problem right now. And that was an aha for me. Cause I'm like, oh, people at the very beginning, like I'm not for them. They have to download a thousand freebies that'll live on their computer for a hundred years before they'll come work with me. So I, I agree. Exactly like, the same thing. Yeah. When I started um, 10 years ago, I wanted to work with starters because mm -hmm. starter entrepreneurs usually commit two big mistakes, which is creating a logo and a website as the first steps. <laughs> which are the worst two steps you can take, right? At least I'm talking about 10 years We'll talk ago. about that. We'll talk about that next week. <laughs> because today with social media, you can see, a, look at your website differently. But um, what many of us think that the moment we have a website and we have a logo, we are, um, we are entrepreneurs and we are in business. <laughs> and two things that will change definitely as you grow in your business is your website and your logo. So those mm -hmm. two significant investments are not wise to be your first investment. But I realized that people who were in the first year of business hadn't had the chance to understand how good marketing could benefit their business and how what's the role of marketing in their business. So they were kind of uncoachable for me. Mm -hmm. And I work best with people who has been in the trenches for one to two years that they have tried things, that they have get to know themselves better as entrepreneurs because that's also very important. And that they start to develop a better look at what their skills are and what they like and then they don't like. So yes, I am the same camp as you, people who has been in business for some years and then they can really value uh, what coaching can do for you and see it as an investment and not as an expense. This actually brings me back to what we talked about at the beginning, which is you have to understand your audience mm -hmm. really, really deeply. So if you understand that your audience and these are your audience isn't necessarily your immediate client, like they're on a journey, your audience, yes. it's not going to happen quickly. And I think too many entrepreneurs forget about that. So if you remember that your audience, they might be with you for a long time, and they might be learning from you and taking some how to content from you and trusting you. But until it gets to be an urgent pain, they won't make the leap. Definitely. I think we need to remember that. And until we know our audience deeply and the, the many facets of their journey, we are still going to feel frustrated with content creation and frustrated with marketing because it's like, why isn't this working? Yes, definitely. And you know, the, the, the thing about content and knowing your uh, uh, client and the customer journey is that you need to create content for every stage of the customer journey because you don't know at which stage your potential client might be. Mm -hmm. And the moment, if you keep your content very basic, and you can still help clients that are more advanced and you keep it out of your library of content, right? You are, might be missing precisely that moment that you say that they have been following you until they saw that piece of content that really struck the chord with them. And then they can say, I need to talk with Jen or I need to talk with Claudia or I need to talk with, to come to a conclusion, to, to help, yeah. You just gave me an idea for another training I'm going to have to do inside the membership site because this is so true. What kind of content do you create for somebody who's just found you and is at the beginning of their journey and their pain isn't heightened enough? And what do you do all along the way? Oh, that's going to be fun to create. Well, you can add to that search intent. <laughs> what is it? Search intent. You can add okay. to that search intent. <laughs> okay. Um, well, so if you, so the, I know that my expertise, my special sauce is content creation, which is just a slice of marketing. Mm -hmm. What is your expertise? So how do you fit into the whole marketing problem that people have? Um, to answer that question, allow me to take a step back and 
um, I like to say that people become entrepreneurs and they enter to entrepreneurship through different doors. So there are some people who have been entrepreneurs or are born entrepreneurs and they start business in one way. Then you have people who has been in corporate and then they become entrepreneurs or people who had a gig on the side, they like the flavor of it and they became entrepreneurs. So what happens is along the way you have some gaps and then you say, but I've been doing everything the guru say, you know, I've been posting, I've been this, I've been that, and I still don't have results. <laughs> so what I do is I come in and I see what, what are the gaps in your marketing. And um, I, I streamline what's working and what's working good. And what's not working, we try to see what works best, what if it should be there or it should be taken out. That's the first thing I do, which is a business review. Because, I mean, if you have reached this point, you are doing something right. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. You, and this is the other thing that I see with many products in the market, is that they all force you to go to a departure point where they don't take into account what you've been doing so far. Mm. So in everything you buy in the market, or in most of the things you buy in the market, they don't take the time to see what have you been doing so far and what can you do with that that you already have so many of these products force you to reinvent the wheel or you don't take a look at what you have done and repurpose it repackage it and that what is what makes so many of these solutions things that we leave in the digital drawer or we don't finish because they are not taking us into account and th mm -hmm. this is where people like you and me come because you and me see the people see the person and see the problem it's not only the problem we see the person and the problem and we match the solution so what i do is i see what you've been doing so far how we can repurpose it so that you can go to market as fast as possible and the other thing i do is i pull out your unique process your unique signature solution out of your head and help you to market it and to brand it so that standing out in the market is easier for you creating content is easier for you um so uh and telling what do you do <laughs> yeah also, that's a hard one for people yeah you know yeah. i just had a client uh email me the other day about she and I were working on her process. She, for years, she never, never thought she had a process. And when she did, she said, I feel like I'm legit now. I feel like I'm not just winging it. And where I think that's important when it comes to marketing is that marketing takes some confidence and courage. And if yeah. you feel like subconsciously, I might attract somebody to me and I really don't know if I can help that person because I don't know what my own process is. I don't know what my four step process is or whatever. You're going to unconsciously sabotage yourself. Definitely. Yeah. So I think having a signature system and it doesn't have to be fancy. And it, the other thing I think about a signature system is people feel like they need to um, have their own signature system that nobody else has ever thought of before. But like all we're really doing is taking this piece of this they piece. They already and this piece have of it. They already, right. The fun thing is they already have it. It's only, it has become so second nature to you that you yes. don't realize yes, yes, that yes. you have a process in place. And what I want to add is a signature solution or your, your signature process or your proprietary process, whatever name you want to give to it, is not your signature course or your signature, you know, it's the umbrella where all the other services you create grow from you know so when you understand how is your process you know mm -hmm. then you can create additional products or services for instance mm -hmm. one of the things i realized <clears throat> in my process and this is part of my message as well is you should be doing a marketing that suits your style so mm -hmm. if you're an extrovert or an introvert or like me a one-on-one -on -one person you need to find a marketing strategy that works to your strengths because otherwise marketing will be unsustainable. And Amen. as you re mentioned recently, marketing is a long-term game. So if mm -hmm. you don't have confidence or if you don't have the patience or whatever, you will flunk it. So it's very important that you create a marketing strategy that is in line, in alignment with who you are.
So if you're not a writer, creating a marketing strategy based on written content isn't going to work for you because at the third time you have to write a blog, you will hate it and you will drop it and you will stop being consistent and you will stop showing up. So I realized I was helping people to find their marketing style and creating strategies in line with their marketing style. So I created a quiz that's called find out your marketing style. And that is something I have in my process, you know, and I, it's in my process. I take the time to see what is your marketing style. And because I take the time to see, I could create a quiz that it's a freebie, but I do create mm -hmm. content that is based on your marketing style, et cetera, et cetera. So it's very important yes. that you don't think that your course is your signature process right. because then you can't create anything else. That's right. That's right. That's right. right? So it's just kind of like a, it's like a 35,000 foot framework. Exactly. Yes. And then everything is built around that, including yeah. your marketing, but you can't, so we have to go back to basics, which is what we started this conversation with. You can't build any of it if you're not sure who's in your audience, what they're thinking, how they're describing their problem, and what solution they are looking for. Because exactly. like you, your great example with the nutritionist, if your people are not necessarily looking to become a size two or a size zero, and they don't want to, they don't want the solution of going to the gym five days a week, then you're just going to miss each other. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So how can people find your marketing quiz? What's the URL for that? Can they just go to your homepage, Bridge to More? Yes, they can go to the homepage and the resources, but it's Bridge to More Marketing hyphen style hyphen quiz. Okay, I've got the Bridge to More uh, webpage, and I'm going to put that up there. You have a resources, and there you find it. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. You're um, we and it's a very cool. You get a lot of, re of of information before you need to sign up, and you and mm. if you want even more information, you sign up. Okay. <laughs> Um, I'm going to put, I'm going to find that, that I'll, and put that on in there. Also the specific link, Claudia, thank you for all of the insights that you gave us today. And I want to continue this conversation because I feel like we need to make marketing more transparent for people because it's, Definitely. it's such a scary thing. Um, I think I've told you my story of like sitting in the car, in the parking lot, sobbing, thinking like, why do I have to do marketing? I don't want to be the one to do it. Well, but if, I feel like if I can love marketing, anybody can love marketing. Well, you know, to close it, marketing is the relationship with your customer. Mm. And the moment you start to see that marketing is your relationship with your customer, you will understand that everything you do is in function of that relationship. Yes. It's as simple as that. So, you know, so many entrepreneurs that say, I started this because I wanted to do more of what I love. And I want to be more with my clients, but I hate marketing. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like the first date in a relationship. Like the marketing is the first date, you know, it's the, or maybe it's not even the first date. Maybe it's the picking up the phone and like swiping, swiping, right? Exactly. Like if you don't even have that, if you're not even on the app, then you're never going to go out on a date. <laughs> you don't exist. <laughs> but definitely start That's to right. think if, if you, if there is a takeaway from this conversation is that marketing is your relationship with your customer. Mm -hmm. And I love it's that. not, uh, it, you know, it's, it, it's what gets you closer to your customer. It's what allows you to sell the services they need. It what gives you the, 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 the podium to talk about what you do and the solutions you do. So stop looking at marketing as a, as a punishment. And you and I both need to take our advice because my <laughs> promise to myself was I need to put out more offers because I market a lot, but I never really put out offers. But now I have an offer like I have my membership and it's a regular offer that anybody could join at any time. And well, you have your offers. <laughs> <laughs> We've got we created all your content. You just need to put it out in the world. <laughs> So believe me, people, we're not speaking from the uh, pulpit. We're down in the choir and the and the uh, <laughs> the chorus. Yes, I am also full of doubts, and uh, you know, sometimes I am like, "Who made me do this?" But uh, <laughs> I think uh, the 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 possibility of helping other people to grow their business is uh, it's wonderful, and we should all everybody who has that possibility has to to use that potential. Thank you. You're Thanks, welcome. Claudia. I appreciate your time today. Bye, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Thank you. Bye. Bye.